высший смысл выборов – это прежде всего выражение воли народа России как главного источника власти. Избирательная система России – это абсолютно уникальный, независимый общественно-государственный институт. Наша демократия – самая лучшая. Voting carousels, ballot stuffing, made-up figures, and 146% are the attributes of elections in Vladimir Putin's Russia. But they're only part of a complex system to hold on to power. The insider spoke to a former precinct chairman about how it all works. This is Alexei. Starting from 2013, he has been involved in organizing elections at all levels, from municipal to presidential. He left Russia after the start of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. My term as chairman of the Precinct Election Commission began in 2013. That was the first term. Then, in 2018, I was approved for a second term through 2023. The chairman of a Precinct Election Commission can only be a person who's been recommended and who already understands that he has bosses whose directives must be followed. Как там начальство исполнительной власти сверху прикажет, так они там и нарисуют результаты выборов. One of the most common violations in elections is voting inauthentically by absentee ballot. A person receives an absentee ballot, and on the day of the election, he can show up at several different polling stations and vote at all of them. The authorities drive groups from polling station to polling station in an organized manner. The one thing that always confused us was that in the changes before the election, a very large number of voters were deregistered from our lists, which means that these people then had to vote in another place. In order to do that, they had to somehow notify the commission, either their own commission or the commission of the place where they were currently located. The imbalance between unregistering and registering citizens was disturbing because the number unregistering was many times larger. There would be 70 or 100 people that would unregister. And the number who would register was maybe three, four, five, six. It was indicated in advance the quantity of voters there should be over the course of the voting process, so that we would put that number on the record immediately. I understand that this was done to increase the turnout percentage, as the turnout at elections in Russia is traditionally low. That's why inflating the turnout and increasing the percentage of loyal voters, yes, this was practiced by the heads of precinct commissions. Честные выборы и строжайшее соблюдение закона во время их проведения – это основа легитимности государственной власти. Как правило. As a rule, we received lists from social institutions and social organizations. They would be for elderly citizens or for the disabled and those with poor mobility, who would find it difficult to come to the polling stations. They belong to the demographic that, in general, supports the ruling government in Russia and the candidates nominated by that government. We needed to call these people ourselves, and on election day, we would go to their homes for on-the-ground voting. This method, in comparison with the other existing methods, is, I would say, the simplest and most reasonable. After the scandalous elections for the State Duma in 2011, video surveillance cameras were installed at polling stations so that the voting process could be monitored online. But this did not save them from violations. Cameras were installed everywhere, of course, in accordance with the law. The issue here is that the cameras cannot physically cover the entire electoral process. And all the premises where the elections are held cannot be covered. For the most part, the cameras are directed at the ballot box and, 
Accordingly, they cover the members of the commission who sit and issue ballots. And the vote count itself takes place under the cameras. The places for voting were not always visible. They did not need to be put under the cameras. And, accordingly, the location of the chairman, the secretary also, did not need to be put under the cameras. In 2020, Russia voted on constitutional amendments to legitimize Putin's desire to stay in power for two additional terms. Experts believe that this vote set a record in the country's recent history for fraud. It wasn't exactly an election, and it wasn't exactly a referendum. This was a certain defined procedure, which, as far as I remember, was initiated by presidential decree. As we were told, it did not fall under the electoral laws, under the laws on elections and, accordingly, under our responsibility. Therefore, unfortunately, this campaign saw a large number of various requests and demands, both to increase voter turnout and to increase the percentage of those voting in favor of approving these amendments. That is, we had to work for a certain result. And, naturally, what should the result be? The results will be communicated to us by our leadership. In previous campaigns, everything was more or less legal and by the book. In this campaign, it was like the whole process had been broken. Seven-day voting was introduced. We had to go door to door based on lists. This is the essence of voting on the stump. It's done to increase turnout. Друзья, если вы видели, как проходит голосование, то вот оно во дворах, в тележках, от пятерочки. Хорошо, мы шли. Ладно. The vote happened. We all went along with it. We were just following instructions, even if these instructions were not clear to me and maybe even not quite legal. They did not constitute direct violations. This wasn't ballot tampering or ballot box stuffing or substitution. People voted. Yes, people came to our polling station to vote. We were told that this is an election, but that since it was not being conducted according to the basic election law, the cameras could be turned off. Then, accordingly, we had to pack these ballots in secure bags, and the secure bags were to be put in a safe. But the strange thing was, that the chairwoman asked for these secure bags to be delivered to the Territorial Election Commission for some reason, and something strange had to be done with them there. I don't know. Then, we got all the packages back. It didn't stop there. We reported every day how many votes we had in relation to the turnout. Yes, I received an order that I had to increase the number of ballots in my polling station. That is, the number of voters was to be increased because the total number of voters in other polling stations was higher than in mine. But in my polling station, it was lower. So I had to pull it up. I didn't understand how to pull it up because I was already pulling it up as much as I could. We went around to the voters themselves. People came to us. The commission worked every day. Then I was told that you can fill the secure bags yourself. This would have a direct impact on the results, on the outcome of the vote. So, there's no way I was going to involve myself in that. But, of course, that was immediately followed by a call from my chairman with very unpleasant, angry questions. I was asked to leave my post. I managed to avoid being involved. My other colleagues didn't. Unfortunately, that was evident in the voting results. My electoral commission had 28% turnout or something. Just the turnout was 28%. And the minimum amount of support from the others was 60 to 70%. I thought I'd end my electoral work after this campaign because the chairman had hinted to me clearly about that. The only thing is that, unfortunately, I had to go through an additional interview with the chairman. And that involved the same old phrases about me understanding that I had to execute the tasks. The elections to the State Duma in 2021 were even more scandalous, notable for the level of ballot box stuffing, camera blackouts, and abnormally high numbers of on-the-stump votes. 
I understand that the scheme with the secure bags appealed to the leadership of the Central Election Commission because it was applied throughout Russia. I understood what this was coming to. There were already three days of voting then. The first day, I think, there was an order for all of the chairmen to stay late after the voting had finished. It was clear that they would ask us to do something with the ballots, those secure bags, which were already full of citizens' votes. But then there was an order that everyone could leave, except certain commissions, which were indicated by number. Later, I saw in the media reports that at some of these commissions, the ones that had very attentive observers, arguments erupted when someone switched or wanted to switch these bags. Unknown people had come and switched these bags and were photographed by independent members of the Electoral Commission. Another way to falsify the results of the elections is to use the method of early voting. Residents of remote areas and shift workers have the right to vote early, and their ballots are very difficult to monitor. And this happened once in 2013, I'm sorry, in 2014, at the elections of the regional governor and municipal deputies. There, the procedure for early voting was very similar to the procedure that is now in place with this seven-day and three-day voting. That is, people could come early and vote. The only difference was that their ballots were stored strictly in envelopes, which were then sealed and put in a safe. There was no secure bags to collect all the ballots from the main box. It was on the day before the main appointed voting day. It was a Saturday. The commissions were required to deliver these envelopes to the election office, to the Territorial Election Commission. I don't know what they did with them there. Special people came and we got them back. And then we opened the envelopes. In the morning, I had to take the ballots out of the envelopes and put them in the ballot box, me personally, as chairman. And when I was putting them in, for some reason, I noticed that all these ballots were somehow ticked everywhere for the candidate of the current government. Before almost every election, two or three days before the voting, the chairman of precinct election commissions received envelopes at the Territorial Election Commission office. I understand that this money was given to the commission, given from above, I don't know, given by the sponsors of the ruling party. They said that this money came from the Kovalchuks or Rottenbergs. We were told that the ruling party, the leadership, is interested in making the elections as successful as possible. And they realized that the amounts that were officially in the budget of the Precinct Election Commission were too small. That's why it's difficult for people to work. That's why people are not very attentive to their duties. In order for people to understand the importance and necessity of working at the elections, this extra amount is given. At first, it was 20,000, then 30. At the last election, it was 50,000 rubles per envelope. This amount was the same for all chairmen. What we got in the envelope was one and a half or two whole salaries. One and a half or two salaries. I can't say that's a lot. Based on the election results, the same envelopes were given out, and, in principle, it was explicitly stated that the handover of the envelopes depended on the results of the election. I got an envelope after the election, too. The last time, I received 20,000. But I know that other chairmen received more by 2019. By 2020, I was already working in another municipality, another district. They had their own commissions. For example, they had the deputy chairman of the Legislative Assembly of St. Petersburg running, who asked me to join his commission and promised me some crazy bonuses. I told him the amounts that we were given before, what kind of encouragement we were given. He laughed a lot about that. 
And I know there were a lot of violations in his district during the constitutional amendment campaign because it was not conducted according to the election law. The chairman of the Territorial Election Commission actually sent me a message on WhatsApp. He asked if I could bring an official results document with the numbers mentioned on WhatsApp. But at that time, as you remember, I said that I wasn't feeling well. I was barely dragging my feet. So I said, we're already done counting the votes. I'm sorry, we're all already on our way to the Territorial Election Commission. We can't change anything. I was told not to hand in the results, even though I said that I was already handing them in. I kind of decided that I didn't need all this. I would hand everything in, and I handed in the document as it was. There was a similar situation in 2011. Everyone was told that the results documented had to be controlled. I don't know. I didn't understand what controlling a document meant. That was written in the text message. For some reason, it seemed to me that it was necessary to hurry up and calculate everything, calculate it in the right way, and hand it over. The rest of our colleagues, judging by the correspondence of our group, we had a separate group for our committee in WhatsApp. They sat there for a very long time and corrected everything. After the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Alexei left Russia because he disagreed with the policies of the current government. The atmosphere in which Precinct Election Commission chairman worked, which I worked in, was not aimed at maintaining the electoral process or the accuracy, the independence of the vote. I didn't get the feeling that the work of the commissions in Russia, the election commissions in Russia, is independent. It's not even about these violations no matter how big or small they are. The issue is that the entire work of these commissions, precinct election commissions, is designed in such a way that these violations would be possible. To what extent is another question, but the most important thing for territorial election commissions, I think, for the current government bodies as well, is that the commissions could be controlled. In some places, they used the carrot method, some of them created a family atmosphere. Some gave out big bonuses in the envelopes. In other places, they turned to the stick. They issued threats. The danger of losing your job. Or, again, a carrot could be a promotion. As far as I know, one of my colleagues who worked in the administration got a position. This I know for sure. Got the position of the head of a department. Yes. And her metrics? It was interesting for me to check her metrics. Her numbers were among the highest. The main requirement for working in the public sphere in Russia isn't following the law. It's executing the orders of the higher-ups, which are set by and relate to the current government. And that's difficult for me, because the orders that are given don't quite fit, let's say, with my views as a citizen.